correct debate over what constitutes a home has removed the landmark. We're debating over whether two men can adopt children and have a normal home. That is not a debate. I don't care if one of them is playing the man and the other one's the feminine part. And they are, if you see two of these perverts, one of them's feminine and the other one is the masculine part. So they're trying to play the natural, you know, roles in this perverted way that they're doing it. I don't know, man. I, I really struggle whether it's better to abort a baby or give it to a couple of queers. I mean, I, mean, I know, and it sounds terrible, but you wonder what's the best route for that child. Because I've seen some of them that's been raised in this. And you talk about a mess. They are a mess. Now, they may be intellectual, they may make good grades, and they may be, you know, uh, very successful in the world's terms. But, buddy, spiritually and ethically and morally, they are bankrupt. They don't know which end is up. And how could they? How could they? Marriage, according to the Bible, I'll state it for the, for the record, one man and one woman. <laughs> Not one man and one man, or one woman and one woman. Discipline's been removed. Children now are able to sue their parents. Corporal punishment's now called child abuse. I may, let me make this statement. If some of the stuff that, ch that parents let their children get exposed to, that's child abuse. Amen. That's child abuse. Not spanking them on the gluteus maximus, which God padded real good and made it right there for the, for the place to be, uh, to be used. There's no fear of God, parents, or authority. Where did kids get this idea that their kids are their equals? And we need to talk this thing out and reason this thing out. I, I'm after my mind all the time about this. Amen. That child is not your buddy. That's right. <laughs> Amen. It's not your, you know, it's your friend, but it's not something you're going to sound say, okay, now let's just, let's just reason through this thing. No. I said no, and I have the right to say no, and run on down the road. And I, this thing where we, you know, negotiate with a 10-year-old is nuts. Amen. Absolutely crazy. Amen. And it's in my home, probably in some of your homes. <laughs> Not much you can do about it, because we raised ours, and they're going to have to do their own, they're going to have to make their own mistakes, amen? amen. Fathers aren't the head of the home. Kids rule. So God's order has been removed. My dad sent, set some landmarks in my, our home. He didn't take me to church. He didn't teach me the Bible. But he taught me honesty. He taught me integrity. He taught me hard work. He taught me morality. He taught me that my word was my bond. And he taught me to keep a good name. Just give you an example. And this, you, you don't know what's going to stick with these. <laughs> they remember stuff that you can't believe they remember. My dad's cattle got into uh, a neighbor's field in the cornfield and tore up a bunch of his corn. I don't know how much, quite a bit. Messed that man's corn patch up pretty bad. So dad goes over to, um, to the guy and he says, uh, he says, Bill, he said, just, just figure up the damage, whatever, whatever it is, and I'll pay. And the guy come up with the number, and Dad paid him. And I'm looking at that, and I'm going, wow. <laughs> that stuck with me, and I said, that's the way it ought to be done. Amen. If you tell somebody that you're, you know, this is the way it's going to be, you don't, and if I tell, and this is what I try to do. I'm not saying I will never break this. But if I tell you I'm going to do something, you don't need no paper. Amen. You don't need no notary. And you don't need to get anything from the, from the legal people. If I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it unless something happens that I can't. Amen. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it used to be back in the days when we lived in darkness, you know. Yep. <laughs> the stupid days, you know. No, what? 
you could go to the bank and get a loan with a handshake. Because they knew that people were men of their word. Let me give you this uh, other illustration real quick. My uncle, I wish I could, you'll see him someday, he's saved. <laughs> My uncle and two other guys owned a garage business, mechanical you know, uh, repair. Um, when they uh, did a job and got paid for it, they took the money and put it over in a uh, money box, you know, a metal box. On Friday, their deal was take whatever you need. Three guys, take what you need. They went that way. I don't know how they, I like to know how they had, did the IRS on that, but I, I don't know. They, but they operated that way for not a week or two, years. Years, man. If you had a bill that needed to be paid and you needed 150, take out 150, nobody was watching you. They trusted each other and they died friends yeah. after doing all. I mean, I can't believe I'm even telling you this. It's so bizarre. But that's the way they operated. And some of y'all know churches that, that kind of operate that way too, which, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into church finance, but uh, some of the old-time churches, hey, you know, we need a load of coal for the, for the coal stove. So, yeah, we got enough, okay. <laughs> they would take up an offering when they needed something, and that was it. That's the old-time way of doing it, man. That is the old time. But I am glad. I, I'm glad I was raised poor, but I'm glad I was raised honest. Because my dad said, those so-and-so people ain't no count because they won't work. <laughs> and they'll cheat you too. <laughs> you know? After the Civil War, I read this story. I think it was true. I may be able to confirm it. But Lee, supposedly, I understand Lee was approached uh, for the rights to his name on a product. I don't remember. You guys, have you guys heard this illustration before? He was approached by some company and, and offered a lot of money to use the Lee name on, I don't know, dog food or whatever it was, some. And Lee turned him down. Even with all that money that they were offering him, he turned him down. Because, you know what, this was a quote. The name Lee is not for sale. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I, He's one of my heroes. Now, he, he, he was on the losing side, and I know it's not popular for me to say I like Robert E. Lee. The old man had more integrity in his little toe, man, than most of these birds today have got in their whole body. That man, had, that man had the integrity. And by the way, let me promote a book by, I forget the guy's name, it's called Religion in the Lee's Army. If you haven't got it, you ought to get it because it tells stories about where Lee would have evangelists come in, especially before they were going into the next battle. Preach the gospel to a man. Those, those young southern boys are getting saved left and right. It's a, it's a good read. Anyway, that's just a commercial. Uh, the landmark of the home. It's, it's a dirty, crying shame. What's happening to Christian homes? I'm not talking about the world homes. I'm talking about the Christian homes. And it all stems on back to the leadership in the home, and then that leadership in the home stems on back to the condition of the church. It all just back, backs right up. And, uh, man, you know, we need to hold the line as much as we can. And that tell you, here's the positive part. We still can. If you want to know about Christian heritage, you can find out. You can teach these kids. You can tell them the truth, and nobody's going to stop you. For now. <laughs> I mean, the church, we came in here without any fear of, you know, the law stopping us, guards and military coming in and, and pointing, you know, uh, AKs at us or anything like that. We, we didn't fear for that. We, can, we still have a lot of freedom. A lot of it's being taken away. A lot of it will continue to be taken away. But we still have freedom to hold the landmarks that we have in our homes, we still have the freedom to turn the thing off. <laughs> if you don't like what they're saying, 
and the scene don't look appropriate for your kids, it's got a knob. It's got to just pull the plug. If you hate it that bad, throw it out. I told my brother one time years ago, we threw out our TV. And they tell you, they, you want to think that people think you're a nut. My, yes, throw out your TV. You know, I told my father-in-law, I said, I thought he'd be happy. I said, my wife challenged me about TV. I was watching Beverly Hillbillies and com complaining about the program. <laughs> How could you complain about the Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> but if something was on there, I wasn't liking it. And she says, my, my wife, you know, bless her heart, man. I miss, she's not with me today, but she's a jewel. Don't you like a woman that'll challenge you every now and then? Yeah. She says, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> I un went over, unplugged it, put it in the trunk of the car. We was on our way to church that night, and I threw it in a green dumpster on the way. Told my father-in-law about it. I said, Elbert, I threw away my TV. And I was so naive, man. He said, you mean you sold it? I said, no, I threw it away. You gave it away. I threw it away. He says, you better be careful. People go nuts on that religion. <laughs> and he was concerned, man. He thought, he thought it was, you know, cuckoo. They will still think you're cuckoo, man. But, uh, you know, we are very close, if we're not there right now, to being a, not an immoral country, a moral country. There's a difference. We're close. And no conscience, I mean, it's been said for, for years now, the devil is looking to rail. All he needs is one generation. If he can isolate one generation from all those landmarks, all that truth, they don't know nothing about it, he's close to getting it. He is close. And then he'll have his prize when he gets that one generation. You go out here, man, and you ask these kids that are under 20 years old, can you, do you know what John 3.16 is? Nope. They don't know. By the way, I ran into one of those John 316 guys one time down at the ball game. He was passing out tracks. They are wild. You always watch sports. These John 316 guys, they'll get in the end zone. They've got to position themselves where the cameras are going to be. So when somebody scores, they're back there, man, and then, you know, they're, you know, playing the replay of the extra point where, whew, here goes that JN 316, man, right there on the camera. And they are, these, those guys are really geared, are high strong. Guy come running past me, and he saw us passing out tracks, and he said, he said, well, let's pray right now. So I got to get in the end zone. <laughs> wow, man. But, you know, these young people, they don't know the first thing about things that you take for granted. And we are in the Bible Belt. What do you think it is in Nebraska? Amen. It's a desolate wasteland. I mean, on out in uh, places where the Bible is nowhere to be found. If we fail to protect the landmarks that we've been given, the next generation, this generation, they've got no boundaries, no compass, no direction. Kids like boundaries. They don't like, you know, you putting the boundaries on them, but they feel more secure when they know that if their parent says, you don't go out of this building, if you go out of this building, I'm going to whip your, I'm going to whip part of your body. <laughs> And you know where they're going to go? You know where they're going to go? They're going to go as far as they can go and still be within the boundary. It's just human nature that we do that. We'll go to the limit of where God will let us to go. But, and we know we're not supposed to go past there, but we're, we're looking back to see if he's watching. <laughs> you know? And that kid will go back there, man, to that farthest corner in the building, as far as he can get away from you. And he'll be back there looking, and he'll be going. <laughs> looking back man to see but they want that kids want to know that I can go this they feel more secure when they know how far they can go and they cannot go any farther they may not like it but they they want it protect the landmark of the church protect the land if you don't know about the heritage and the history of this country and some of the the, the quotations that have been made and the way these original Founders felt about the Bible and about God. Read it and find out. We need to protect the heritage we have in the home. And it's my responsibility as a father. And it's yours.
When you become a father, it's your responsibility. Don't drop the ball. Remove not the old landmarks. Amen. Amen. That's the message for tonight, brother. Amen.